Hello everyone, and welcome back to my let's play of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader beta version. In the last video, we have ventured into the navigator chambers where we found that the navigator is fighting against demonic possession. And now we are progressing to, I think, the bridge. No, we are progressing to the officer's deck to try and uh, reconnect with uh, Edelhard, the Psyka and our rival for the position of an air. Uh, since the last video, I have made a small change to my character by using the toy box mod. Uh, I would like to make my character distinct from uh, Idira, and I would like to do a more support position after all. So I have added myself the tactical knowledge talent. Uh, I did not manage to do a respec, so I could not remove exposed weakness, but we'll just pretend that I do not have it. It's not on my action bar, we're not using it. So, let us proceed. Uh, previously, we fought uh, against the heretics in this big uh, meeting room, I guess. So let's get going. What do we have? Examine the model. I rise to the occasion. An exact replica of the Fon Valencia's warship sits on the pedestal. Labels indicate the main compartments and decks of the vessel. Uh, we did not loot the bodies after the scrap. What do we have? We have a scrappy autobot. Garbage. And another auto gun. Garbage. What else do we have? <laughs> Titles and authors are printed in gold on the spines of the books. The library contains works on Imperium theology, law codices, biographical sketches, and chronicles of the greatest, mili greatest military conflicts of the Coronas Expanse and the Calixis Sector. Mm -hmm. And... A machine right set. A set of... Uh, sacred oils and Kakita grounds that can appease the keeper of any technology provides an additional opportunity to call out a machine spirit and interact with, de with a device, an expendable item. Uh, Melt charge, explosive device suitable for eliminating flimsy obstacles. And Multi-Key, universal lockpicking tool, provides an additional opportunity to open a lock, an, an expendable item. Cool. It would help us open some doors, I suppose. Uh, what else is here? There is uh, this box of goods. Uh, Abelard found... Uh, it is kind of weird that we are lo looting our own ship and packaging the goods from our own ship. Uh, we have... Yeah, I guess this doesn't get uh, specific descriptions, like heretic trophies we just have 50 percent of them but the, what they are is not listed in any key in any way and uh, we have more weapons let's open this door uh with my impeccable logic hell yeah i am the logicest man alive we have yet more cargo we have uh operator's gloves the wearer of these gloves gains a plus three bonus to take your skills and more melted charges. This item, ha you, the item you have equipped, increases the attack use skill. It will not be easier to pass relevant skill checks. Great. And I think uh, Sister Ag Agenda is praying. Undaunted by enemy of humanity, something, something. Uh, the cogitator is silent. It seems that its machine spirit is no longer being powered by the motive force. Uh, let's open this door. Hell yeah. And we store the power supply. I rise to the occasion. Uh Okay. The light is back. Can we open this door? Ooh, tech use only plus twenty. This could be challenging. Done. But not for me. More goods. We get more melter charges and more med kits. Fantastic. And a little box, which contains a mantle of heresy. Or, uh, okay, requires Benevalentia adherent. Each heroic act used in, in the battle increases the wearer's dodge by 10% until the end of combat. So it's for goody good guys like Abelard. Uh, you can wear it. Uh, not for the Empress Chosen. More woods. This room has so much shit in it. Uh, the cozy seating area is completely destroyed. 
Pieces of furniture and splinters are scattered everywhere, and dark stains cover the floor and upholstery. Okay. Uh, let me try uh, doing formation once again. Maybe reloading has uh, fixed it. What if I just go into a star formation? Okay, so if you do a preset formation, it works. And if I do like this, it does not. Nope. Okay. So formations are just busted. Uh, in that case, reset, reset. Oh, I also see that uh, they are all just boxes. Uh, yeah, this, this should do. Let's leave with this. I am fairly tanky, so it should be fine. Uh, and <coughs> we can blow this door. Sister Agenda, do your thing. Good job. Good job. Now, uh, which way do we go? Okay, this is probably the way we go. And this looks like a dead end where we might be able to grab some. A fallen stair has blocked the path to the lift. You will have to look for another way to Edelhard. Okay. Uh, let us save. And open this door. Which requires... Okay, we have passed the skill check. Uh, dead Godsman, what do you have for us? You have a helmet. Dead officer's helmet. This helmet grants 5% to arm. Yes, please. Ah, oh, my awesome hat! My cool Pope hat! Oh well, I will have to look like a... Godsman. What you do for armor? Okay, so yeah, armor just doesn't display properly here. Weird. What? Okay. Uh, can we reach this? No. Then, let's keep exploring. You, Godsman. Provide your goods to me. More lockpicks. The benches and even the cogitator, torn from its proper place, are stacked in a rough semblance of a barricade. Okay, this is something back in the room, so we do not need to see it. Then, let us keep going. Ooh, explosions. Fancy, fancy. That's an issue. I, <coughs> I can't see. Wow. You went through the fire? The roar of the flames rings in your ears, and the choking smoke makes you cough and gasp for air. Instinctively, you instinctively recoil from the scorching heat, wiping your face. A moment later, a hazy silhouette forms in the raging wall of fire. You are surrounded by ear-splitting noise and screaming, yet you distinctly hear the sound of footsteps, and then you see the figure walk out of the fire toward you. It is Theodora von Valencius. Is Theodora the Psyker? Her, exp her expression is calm, terrifying for someone whose body is engulfed in an inferno. One of her hands is resting on the hilt of her power sword, the other is raised in an inviting gesture. Are you lost, my heir? Agenda goes as still as a statue, then slowly raises her weapon. An, an apparition! A sorceress apparition! Trickery of the warp! Sister, you will lower your weapon. Despite his commanding tone, Abela uh, doesn't sound too confident. He is staring at the rogue trader, and you notice a mask in his cheek twitching. Threatening the Lord Captain is outrageous. How did you get here? Aren't you in pain? This is impossible. This is impossible. I doubt you are aware of the limits of what is possible, Conrad, for your worldview is but an iota of what a rogue trader knows and sees. But I can tell you that you would like me to share the knowledge with you, that power over reality. Okay, you definitely sound like a demon now. Oh. Theodora watches you without blinking. Her snake-like gaze almost makes you forget about the fire searing you, leaving burns on your skin. I can lead you out of these flames, Conrad, show you a path, rid you of pain, and give you a weapon so that you may defeat your enemies. Decide. Your mouth begins to salivate. Each word Theodora speaks is like music to your ears. The entity that now dwells in the deepest recesses of your mind is pleading, begging. Demanding that you give her an immediate answer. 
and that answer can be nothing other than acceptance. Do not listen to this abomination. Conrad, if you... If there is naught but his light in your heart, you are resolute in your faith, then... If you are resolute in your faith, then step into the flames. The Emperor protects. His faithful will not be deterred by either darkness or deceitful promises, nor will the fire burn those who carry the torch of faith in their soul. To the void with you. We need to follow Lady Theodora before we suffocate in this furnace. The people... Abelard looks back at the coughing and confusing and confused people around you. Conrad, the survivors from the middle decks. We must help the crew. Lead them out. Find a way around. Over the roaring flames, you hear distant sounds. Frightening voices, screams, muffled and distorted. As if, the, they were a bo as if there, there were a body of water between you and them. Okay, this is sounding remarkably like uh, the mythic paths from uh, Pathfinder or Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, and I guess this is related to the alignment. Predictions this time. Sometimes your character will have to make tough decisions based on their values, interests and goals. Such decisions affect their convictions that can develop in three directions. Imperialis, Benevolentia, Hereticus. Each includes five ranks. The higher the rank, the more zealously the character follows their convictions. And the more noticeably the world around them reacts to their actions and decisions. Promotions through the ranks of, uh, of each of the three directions open up access to new dialogue lines, events, unique abilities, and also change the attitude of others toward your character. Then we'll miss our chance to meet up with Edda. Idira breaks off and starts coughing violently. Her knees buckle and she looks like she's about to fall. Conrad, what are we waiting for? Imperialis walks through the fire. Uh, Hereticus, accept the offer of help. Benevolentia, get the people off the bridge. Imperialis, walk through the fire. The Emperor will guide the righteous on their path. Thousands of needles pierce your consciousness, but are powerless to stop you. You take a step forward, and the illusion breaks. A wave of excruciating pain crashes over you, and Theodora's voice fades into the firestorm. You hear the voices of your companions calling, from behind, calling you from behind, and the screams of the weak dying in the inescapable blaze. Ole Emperor. The blinding inferno, the harrowing pyre, the all-consuming storm releases you as you step out, barely able to stay on your feet. The blood is pouring in your ears, drowning out the world, the world around you. Your eyes, caked in soot and burnt eyelashes, refuse to open. Free from the flames, you take two more steps before collapsing to your knees. The rush of blood in your temples and the horrible pain all over your scorched body plow your mind before suddenly retreating, as if driven away by some mighty will. A new strength spreads throughout your veins, and despite your wounds, your body is once more ready for trials and struggle. You open your eyes and see, a glow with warm light before you, the Aquila, the sacred symbol of the Imperium. It's this thing. The two-headed eagle sigil that signifies the Imperium. In the next moment, you are st struck with another realization. The repulsive presence, the one that has plagued your mind since Voigtria wounded you, is gone. The fire seems to have burned the entity away without a trace. Mr. Conrad! Master Conrad, can you hear me? A familiar voice cuts through the Dean and the Pounding. Seneschal Abelard Versarion is leaning over you, peering, in peering into your face with a look of worry. He notices your gaze and breathes a sigh of relief. You're alive and sane. Which is more than I was expecting after what you just did. Praise the Emperor! Agenta kneels next to you, and for the first time you see her eyes radiate pure, unclouded joy. We pass through the flames! Oh, how can this be anything but important? For so it is said that the Emperor will bless the worthiest and most steadfast in their faith. Behind Agenta, you see Idira Flats doubled over in a fit of nausea. The rest of the people who are following you have withered away in the fire that continues to rage mere meters from you. The Emperor protects Seneschal. Did you see that? The Aquila! It was glowing! We are still alive! Fancy that! The Emperor protects Seneschal. Your tone renders Abelard motionless. Then he quickly makes the holy sign of the Aquila himself. Indeed he does, Conrad. If I hadn't seen it myself, I never would have believed. Idira wipes her mouth and rasps. What happened to Lady Theodora? Did she follow us? There was no Theodora. There was no Theodora, which, 
but Genta is standing straight ahead, staring straight ahead, then crosses her arms over her chest with reverence. There was an illusion, a temptation, a foul taint that tried to lead us astray, but Conrad perceived its true nature. Well, you also did, you immediately called that it's an illusion. Is that right, Adeptus Sanctimonious? What, we'll just pretend like we didn't see the Lord Captain standing there in the fire? Abelard, you tell her. Whatever it was, it matters no longer. Abelard sighs. Your conduct, Conrad, is bordering on madness, or holiness. A path opened behind you, where one moment there was fire, the next only smoldering embers remained. But what am I saying? My eyes must have, de my eyes must have deceived me. Too much smoke for my lungs. Truly, would you have received wounds like these if there was no, if there had been no fire? The wounds are merely a sign of a trial laudably passed. If it is something to be proud of, the same as decorations or badges of order. Again, to yourself, sounds proud, even fervid. Rise and stand tall. No element holds the power over the righteous. This means the help and stand up on your own. I feel fine. Allow Abila to help you up. Admittedly, I have been better. No element holds the power over the righteous. Even if you were anticipating another wave of pain, it does not come. Your muscles feel strong, and your limbs obey you without fail. And yet, deep inside, somewhere next to your heart and stomach, you feel a certain tension yet to, akin to that of a taut string. You are at your limit. Be it adrenaline or the strength of your faith, it will not carry you much farther. Oh. Hello, little heart. Adelhard von Valencius stares at you without trying to hide his awe. Conrad, do my eyes deceive me? I could swear that I just witnessed you step out of that pillar of fire with the rest falling in your way. I hurried here to join forces with you and the others. It is time to push the heretics back. It was the only way. We are here in response to your vox call. I love being late for an engagement. For an engagement. Uh, I don't want to be smarmy. Uh... One and two are honestly pretty similar. Let's go with one. I hurried here to join forces with you and the others. Indeed it is, Conrad. Adelhard makes the sign of the Aquila and gives you another look. This time one of concern. Your wounds. Uh, okay, let's do... Uh, we can look closely at Adelhard. My faith keeps me upright with a weapon in my hand. That is all that matters. I can fight, at least for the time being. They certainly are ugly. I would rather sit this one out while you lot deal with the heretics. Look closely at, at, at Adelhard. Adelhard doesn't seem to have changed since you first met, but only at the first glance. His face took on a strange hue, something like scales appeared on his temples, and there is a weird screeching note in his voice. These are not traces of fatigue and stress. The psychic's body has begun to mutate, a consequence of a contact with the wolf. Oh, and we get Imperialis uh, points for this. Interesting. Huh, that, that is unexpected. You are, not, you are not in the best shape yourself, Edelhard. The psychic grins back at you. Did you pick up the traces of my blessing, Conrad? Yes, the warp is taking its toll. But I am still sane and able to hold my weapon. I fight for Von Valencia's bloodline to the end, even if it costs me the eternal curse of mutation. Maybe Edelhard is better than he first appeared. Maybe we can rely on him, if he survives. My faith will keep me upright and with a weapon in hand. That is all that matters. Edelhard holds up his hand in a placating gesture. Pray, forgive my existence. I shall not be the one to doubt the faith of he who has passed the trial by, by fire. I have gathered everyone who answered the walk's call and was able to hold a weapon. Yet, I do not see the Lord Captain or her Archmilit under our midst. We are still receiving messages in her voice, but she is not responding to direct requests. I last saw Lady Theodora on the observation platform. When did you and she part ways? It was at this very elevator, Master Edelhard. The Lord Captain, accompanied by the Archmilitant, headed to her chambers to retrieve an item of particular import. After that, all we heard from her were Vox broadcasts. This is troubling, and the timing is inopportune. I am still receiving fragmentary reports from the bridge. Conrad Voigtvia was spotted there, and even what scant intelligence on his activities I have reminds me of descriptions of sorcerer's rituals. If that traitor has resorted to witchcraft, we must stop him at once. How do you know that he is a traitor? Did we pass this information along to someone? So far everyone we talked to was 
getting surprised that he's a traitor. Uh, I shall go to Theodora's chambers to fight you. I think that is more interesting than an assault on the bridge. Edelhard's no Edelhard notes. A reasonable approach. Take your escort with you. You may be way late. Once you have found Lord, Cap Lord Captain, you must beg her to go to the bridge and lead the counterattack. The rock trader's appearance is sure to fill the defenders' hearts with hope, however frightened or exhausted they may be. Until, we meet, un, until next we meet, Conrad. May the Emperor bless your deeds. I shall see you on the field of battle. Adult Hutt salutes you with his weapon and turns to his retinue. Well, well, well. Interesting developments. Very interesting. Uh, what do we have here? Generators hum softly. Our skin begins to something something with static discharge. Continue. Uh, where do we go? Oh, I got a wound. Uh, I would like to not have a wound, actually. And I have pretty beefy 50 bed again. Okay, I guess I do not want to use... Why can I not equip medikits? This is bizarre. I think that that's probably a bug. That has to be a bug. Uh, she also cannot use med medkits. God damn it. Fine. Let's... I guess we will have to use uh, bad rolls. Okay. Yes. Wound healed. Is there a roll? Doesn't say. Uh, this also actually might be a bug. We are supposed to have rolls for removing all the wounds. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, Abelot spots a secret door. Cool. Lord Captain's quarters. This is where we are going. Then let's loot everything. Uh, this room clearly does not serve as a state room. The generators, machines, and crude wall paneling indicate that it is a maintenance module room, rather than an area for receiving guests. Okay. Uh, but we, before we go down the elevator, there is more stuff I would like to check out on the officer's deck. Lex Mechanics Goggles. These goggles grant a plus three bonus to logic checks. Cool. Why not? Okay, it goes into the helmet slot. Uh, well, that is certainly a look. Uh, you know what, Abelard? You can have the deck of the helmet. You go on the front lines all the time. And I will take the goggles. Plasma conduits blaze with the energy capable of powering a, a vast watch. Uh, Annunciation is not my strong suit today. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else was on this deck before we are cut off and forced to go somewhere. Uh, this is an elevator. I believe this is where we arrived. Okay, now we are on the other side of this barricade. Cool. Alright, we got everything that was present. So let us go to Lord Captain's quarters. We are really booking it. Uh, oh, there was some goods from the heretics that I guess I did not notice somewhere. Well, certainly story developments. Personal expectation is for Theodora to be dead in her quarters. Maybe backstabbed by Mort, or worst case scenario, backstabbed by Edelhard. But I hope Edelhard is... Uh, going to be an ally, because I think that is more interesting than him being yet another traitor. But we shall see. What do we have here? A very fancy bedroom. Well, I say very fancy for a rogue trader. Maybe this is like uh, slumming it. Uh, a pool. Uh, okay. Uh, it is a bit hard to see. Uh... The visuals are great, but the camera and the high nature of the walls is making it not so good sometimes. Okay, I see. I think that's Mort. And there is Theodora. Rip. We hardly knew you. What a shame. I could do with a good mentor for a character. But alas, not this time. A bizarre fragment hung on the trophy board. 
The light smooth surface of the object is dotted with dark spots and, crumb and crumbling holes. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, can I position it so that the wall doesn't disappear? Okay, I think it looks like a hat of some sort. Okay, I guess I needed to step away from it. It looks like a shark or something like that, but maybe it's just a pointy rock. Uh, okay, it's this is not a server rock, this is a weapon display. With incredibly fancy weapons. If only we could get some. Uh, an organ. The parlor organ seems to have been sitting idle for many years. Fair enough. Uh, let's ransack her place before we go for something. Theodore's Rosary. The wearer of this amulet gets a bonus to cup commerce and law imperium checks equal to their fellowship bonus. Uh, sounds like an amulet item. He, my fellowship is sucks. Rock Trader's Cloak. The wearer of this cloak gains a plus 5 bonus to fellowship for each enemy in a 2 cell radius. Well, I will take this one. Uh, now. Uh, the, my fellowship bonus is 2. Uh, your fellowship bonus is 3. What about the skills? Commerce and Law Imperium. Commerce is 40, Law Imperium is... Uh, Commerce is 40, Law Imperium is 30. Commerce 25, Law Imperium 50. Uh, you know what? I will take it. Yeah. I would, like to, I would just like to have it for myself. I think that's more fitting. Awareness check. The scene of the murder looks like... Something, something, something. Theodore Theodor von Valencius's body is sprawled on a large, blood-drenched desk. The Archmilitant's corpse, still clutching a weapon, is lying on the floor by one of the bulkheads. The Sister of Battle surveys the scene, her gaze lingering on the Archmilitant's body. Emperor! Emperor, accept thy faithful souls! No! Idira's heart-rending heart, Idira's heart scream shakes the walls. She collapses to her knees. Her body, sh her body shuddering as she leaves. I... Lord Captain, I didn't hear. Didn't hear a thing. Not a whisper, not a breath. It was... It was too loud. Why didn't I foresee this? Well, you are only a... Uh, Psy rating 1 Psyker. You are... You are not actually great at any of this. Emblad, stunned, takes a few steps forward and leans heavily on the edge of the desk. His eyes are locked on Theodora's body. Lord Captain... Who would even dare? Unless the threat void here. Almost certainly, he loved Theodora. I doubt it. Voivtia wished humiliation and suffering upon Theodora, not a swift death. Or say nothing. Uh the wisest course of action is probably to say nothing, since we don't really know. Uh and if his masters commanded him, he most certainly would be fast. But uh I will just be skeptical in this situation. I doubt it. Voitier wished humiliation and suffering upon Theodora, not a swift death. It could have happened in the heat of battle. Not to mention that Maud was here, and he could, would have protected Theodora to the last. How could Maud have fared her so terribly? The Arch Militant was born on a death world. He had lightning fast reflexes. Dura soaps and gets up. She glances around, looking lost. I. I can look at things. In my own way. If you find something. Something that might bear the imprint of the killer. Just give it to me, and I'll try to see what secrets it holds. Uh, let's start... Actually, you know what? This is really important, and I am a scumbag. I would like to re-roll that uh, uh, perception check. So I'm just going to reload. Uh, we had best be on our way. Uh, we failed the perception check, right? No, we succeeded. Okay, then I am an idiot and should reload anyway. Oh well. <laughs> Forgive me for this indiscretion. Okay. I'm pretty sure this time we definitely passed the check. Uh, I doubt it. Examine Theodore's body. Let's start with you lean closer to the body. The cause of death is apparent. What ended the rock trader's life was an auto pistol shot. An extraordinarily accurate one at that. The Adora's face bears an expression of surprise. The last emotion she experienced in life. So she most definitely was betrayed. 
Uh, going back, well, let's see, examine his body first. Something on the floor catches your eye. A heap of blood spl spattered parchments and scrolls that must have fallen off the desk. As you link down for a closer look, you notice something else. Small shards of glass scattered on the floor. Uh, Idiro, would you try touching Theodora? You might be able to see the killer through her eyes. Dira's whole body shudders. It doesn't look like that. I can try to read the memories of objects, but dead bodies are a different story. Something like that would require her soul. And after what we saw on the officer's deck, I won't risk searching for it in the warp. Uh, inspect the shards by the desk. It's difficult to say what exactly was broken. The objects fell on the floor, and that is as much as you can ascertain. Upon closer examination, the shards appear iridescent rather than completely transparent, as if they had been submerged in Primethium. A broad term for combustible fuel in the Imperium of Man. Okay, a uh, new theory, there was a demon uh, housed in one of the objects that she had, like uh, the uh, memory orb in Eisenhorn that had an ancient heretic in it, uh, and uh, it got out and killed her. Idira, what do these shards tell you? Idira scoops up, uh, Idira scoops up a handful of shards and clenches them in her fist with such strength that blood starts dripping on the floor. I see streaks of color, luminescence, blue light, faces drawing closer, Lady Theodora and Gundred, and what is that? Ah! She shakes her hand, looking frightened. Something dark, enormous. Oh, Conrad, this glass thing was something nasty, that's for sure. Okay, I am more affirmed in my theory that it is related to the chaos. Tainted witchcraft. You cannot tell if Agenda's remark is directed at the glass shards or Idira herself. Uh, let's go to the papers. Uh, reports, accounts, dispatches. You go over the scrolls until you stumble upon a document that is starkly different from the rest. It is a handwritten letter signed with initials XC and a seal with a symbol that is vaguely familiar to you. Handwritten letter by the seal. Yeah, did we fail our check? Oh, come on, we had 62. Uh, do I come back and reload once again? Maybe. Uh, examine the Ash uh, Militant's body. An auto pistol shot went straight through Maud's forehead. Spraying the floor and the furniture around with blood, brain matter, and shards of his skull. The safety of, on the Arch Militant's weapon is off. The killer must have been a split second quicker than he. We had best be on our way. Yes, the Crucible of Battle calls to me once more. No, wait, we must see if we can find anything. Idira. Abelard lays a hand on her shoulder. You can't bring her back. Let her go. You'd give up so easily, old man. I expected as much from the sister. It's not like she has a heart. But you? Oh no. I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll find the one responsible for murdering the captain. And when I do... Idira clenches her fists. That scum will regret the day they were born. Alright. Right. Uh, we get a level up. Ooh. Level up, level up, level up. Uh... It does. It looks kind of weird. Maybe we got uh, enough experience to level up to twice. Yeah, I think we got uh, two level ups for everyone. Uh, what are we getting? Uh, tech use is certainly a great skill. Although I intend to keep a, a tech priest on my payroll all the time. Uh, Medicate would be good. Awareness would be good. I certainly would not mind having more awareness. Uh, let's go for more awareness. Awareness is always a great skill. Now, for our talent, I am going to go with the Litany of Purification. All enemies in the area of effect of the Warhim ability gain one stack of disturbed effect. Enemies that are adjacent to the priest gain two stacks of the disturbed effect. Of disturbed and stack. Also, all demons in the area of effect suffer damage equal to the priest's momentum restored while using this ability. Uh, almost makes me feel like I sh uh, the priest uh, has better synergy with the melee class than the rage class. But okay. Uh, yes, uh, for this playthrough, however short it will be, I am going to go into the priest abilities. 
And for our third skill level up, I am going to go into uh, maybe more awareness even. Uh, okay, we can see the ranks here. They all have 30s. Uh, Adira and Argenta have 45. Uh, I'm the best here at 45. Maybe Law Imperium would be good or Law Xenos. Uh, I'm going between tech use and awareness, and I think I'm going to go for more awareness. You can never go wrong with the perception chart. And we get a dismantling attack. Uh, what is this? The adept immediately inflicts one stack of clues on, on all enemies in combat. The adept makes a free attack against the target. It always hits. Until the end of combat, the target gains a minus 30 penalty to dodge and a minus 30 penalty to armor. Uh, I guess this is like our ultimate ability or something like that. Let's see about others. Yeah, okay. Uh, it is not a bug, we just get ability for everyone. Uh, you get increased movement points by 4, so you move a shit ton. Uh, your special abilities, what do you get? You have Navy Officer abilities such as Brace for Impact to get more cover penetration. Oh, you get permanent plus 15 cover penetration. That's probably nice. But you're a melee guy, so maybe that doesn't matter so much. Uh, suffer only half damage from attacks of opportunity. That's pretty good. Uh, do not suffer negative effects of melee superiority. Uh, not sure what that is. Uh, you have... What do you have here? Means it requires break through the lines. Okay, your abilities... Your talent uh, tree looks really fleshed out. Uh, you have Reckless... Okay, I took Reckless Strike for you. Do any of these have Reckless Strike as a prerequisite or mention Reckless Strike? You can get Damage Deflection and Parry Chance. Uh, you deal additional Agility bonus damage to enemies that have no allies and adjacent cells. Uh, plus 3 damage doesn't seem that great. When the fighter is attacked, they gain one stack of epicenter of slaughter until the end of combat. At the start of their turn, the fighter gains one temporary wound for each step. Okay, so when you get attacked, you get a bit beefier. Uh, you get a critical hit chance, eh, whatever. Whenever an enemy attacks the fighter, the fighter's next melee attack against that enemy deals an additional toughness bonus damage. Does not stack, but can be reactivated after another attack made by the same or different enemy. Uh, plus four, that's pretty good. Okay, I guess. Uh, damage dealt by charge is increased by uh, toughness plus strength bonus, so plus by plus 8 from a big uh, range. Uh, if there are no enemies adjacent to you, you're, you get double strength bonus. Hmm, that's pretty good, I guess. Enemies suffer a minus 15 penalty to their hit chance with ranged attacks against the fighter for every enemy in a one cell radius around the fighter. Okay. Okay, respectable. Uh, increase charge distance. Uh, get dodge when you get hit. Uh, get armor against uh, enemies. Get damage deflection against uh, first attack by every enemy. What do I take? I am really not sure. Uh, less damage on attacks of opportunity. Okay, Reckless Fury. Reckless Strike gains plus 4 times weapon skill, bonus to critical hit chance. That seems pretty good, to be honest. Uh, plus 12, uh, plus 16% uh, uh, critical hit chance. Uh, do I know what your critical hit chance even is? Uh, is it listed somewhere? How would I know that? Uh, it would certainly help with the downside of uh, Reckless Fury. Reckless Strike, that uh, you get uh, hit back by anyone who survives. Uh, huh. No bonuses for being flanked, and that is actually pretty damn good. More parrying. Uh, let's see again what was here. Uh, and Rage is right. Uh, when you attack, you get uh, bonus wounds. Uh, uh, 
Honestly, I might go for thick skins just so he is uh, much tankier and can stand up uh, at the front line. Uh, and you are decently armored, so giving you more parry chance is good. Let's go with that. And for your skill, I am going to go with athletics. Yes. And you get um, bonus movement points and Daring Breach. Fighter immediately restores all AP and MP and gets additional uh, plus 4 movement points until the end of turn and doesn't look MP after performing attacks. This turn fighter has no limit on melee weapon attacks. Okay, I see. That is pretty beefy. Uh, Edira. What do you get? Tech use, logic, no, my character already covers that. Awareness, Medicaid, uh, Xenos. Let's go with Xenos. We don't have any Xenos experts. And you have quite a bit of overlap with me. Uh, for you, we are taking more psychic powers. Uh, Edge of Fate. Uh, you give 25% crit hit chance to all of us. Uh, Alice under the effect of at least one psychic power gain and additional armor penetration. Pretty good. Every time all the Psychos allies parry or dodge 9 enemy attacks during one combat, you get plus 2 action points. Eh, kind of would. Whatever. The first dodge attempt of every enemy in combat suffers minus 7... Well, in this case, just minus 7 penalty. I'm pretty alright. When the Psycho uses a Divination Psychic Power on an ally without an initial luck effect, that ally gains an initial luck effect. If the ally under this effect suffers a critical hit, it becomes a usual hit and the effect fades. Eh... Too specific, I think. Uh, okay, I might actually not go for any of these. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I am debating between Fatebringer and Predicted Downfall. I think Predicted Downfall because tanking the enemy's dodge is uh, sounds like a good idea. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, you are just kind of a worse version of me, <laughs> heal wise. Ah, let's go for more, for more low Xenos. And you get, yes, same dismantling attack as me. And sister, uh, dear sister Ar uh, Argenta, who is a marksman. Uh, you are not getting the Ministerum Priest abilities, I have those. And your willpower is not that good compared to mine. So what are you getting instead? For your first ability, you took dash and you have run and, uh, shot on the run. So what do we have? Rapid reloads could be good. After maximum deal damage to three different enemies, the next attack in combat will deal additional uh, damage. Uh, good with your burst fire. For every adjacent ally, the maximum deals additional damage. No, probably not. Uh, the maximum has additional critical hit chance. And the bonus is uh, doubled against the enemies from which the marksman has a cover. Uh, good, I suppose. Uh, each time the marksman deals damage, their critical hit damage is increased by 3%. Uh, yes. Cover efficiency is ex uh, increased by 10% for full covers and 20% for half cover. Sounds quite alright. Uh, what else do we have? Point blank might be good. You are a point blank type of character. Uh, all marksman's area of effect attacks gain additional armor penetration and d ignore damage. Okay, in a radius of three cells. That's kind of bad. Mm. Muscle, uh, burst attack, extra damage, sounds good. Uh, what do you get? Warning. Uh, what is second skin? Your medium armor does not decrease dodge. Uh, potential, potential. Dash does not end the movement. Enemies near the dash starting point will attack maximum at lowest priority in their next turn. Uh, let's go with something from the top. And we will go... Do I go with uh, Taste the Pain, Rapid Reload, tag team, not Tag Team, uh, with Hit Chance, I might go for the crit hit chance. 
Uh, fight up is good for long combat, but I'm not sure how much long combat there would be. I would rather have just uh, a nice plus 10% crit hit chance. Yeah. Uh, what are you getting? You are getting more demolition. You are good at demolition. And I suppose, well, I have good awareness. In fact, I have 60 awareness, which is amazing. Uh, I might go for Medicaid. Uh, oh, go for athletics. I might take a blood team. And you get military excellence. The marksman gains the ability to make a number of free attacks equal to their weapon's rate of fire, minimum 2, with the cheapest weapon's attack ability. Until the end of the turn, the first attack against a new enemy automatically deals a critical hit. Pretty good. Also, the marksman immediately reloads their current weapon. Yeah. All really nice. Everyone is a good boy now. Or a girl. Uh, oh, <laughs> I feel like it's, uh, it is a bit disrespectful to loot the Captain Militant's helmet. Uh, grants its wearer immunity to enemy critical hits for the first three rounds of combat. But you gotta do what you gotta do. And we are not cool enough to wear it. So to Sister Argente goes. Okay. You dog. Uh, what is do we have next? What is? Okay, there is Theodora, her character portrait. She looks remarkably like mom from Futurama. Uh, although she was not... Well, Ma mom had her moments. She wasn't always bad. Oh no, an ambush. And they have a robot, a servitor. Okay. Uh, I will go here, I think. From, from which position do I have the best... You know what? No. I'm going to the front line. From here I should have a good uh, hit with my uh, uh, him. Uh, Argenta gets in cover. And Abelard, uh, go like this. Start battle. Unfortunately, my initiative sucks. But I have so much armor that their uh, attacks barely face me. And we do an epic dodge against everything the uh, combat servitor did. Light and medium armor. Armor protects character, uh, the character from incoming damage. Light and medium armor types are available to you at the moment. The armor stat indicates what percent of the incoming damage from an enemy attack it can absorb. The type of armor also determines how successfully the character wearing it will make dodge checks. The higher the dodge penalty, the lower the chance to dodge an enemy attack. Character in light armor dodges attacks more often but takes more damage. Medium armor absorbs more damage if the character is hit, but reduces mobility and ability to dodge attacks. Some talents allow characters to use different types of armor more effectively. Understood. Uh, Abelard goes first, I suppose. Uh, and uh, he goes right in the center. And he hits everyone for massive damage. Yes, this group. Destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. And let's have the deflection. Uh, I think he, yes, he also gave me praise for impact. Very good, Abelard. Now, it's me. Uh, enjoy the war him. Haha. -ha. Uh, what does it actually do? This creature suffers minus 10 penalty to willpower and fellowship checks for each level of this effect. Oh. That doesn't sound useful. That doesn't sound useful at all. Uh, okay, I guess I cannot do attacks because I am too close. Uh, what do I do? Do I do study enemy? No, I do not do study enemy. I disengage. Who cares? You barely do any damage to me. And then I shoot the bastards. Uh, I will shoot the servitor. Boom. 
Take that scum. Uh, yes, we can right click to see enemies. Uh, sister agenda, do me proud. Uh, right, this is, I, yeah, this is the momentum ability. Uh, it's uh, this guy. Boom. Phenomenal. And next, I want you to. Oh, I should have probably done shot on the run. Uh, right. Well, maybe I can st still do that. Let's try it. Yeah, we can still do that. Uh, we do not actually go anywhere. We just do the next, the second shot. And we fit. In that case, uh, Itira, how about you? You can do study enemies what? Was that you? Or... and psychic stream at this guy. But of course. Boom. His legs fell off from how hard he was screaming. Race to minus two. What? Okay. We get Grace of the Oblivious. The wearer gains 5 toughness if their intelligence is less than 35. Okay, that is funny. That is pretty funny. And everything else goes to the cargo. Uh, which one of us is sufficiently dumb? You, a pilot. Okay, and Itira. Actually, all of them. Alright. Uh, who wants more toughness? Probably Abelard. Abelard, enjoy your 45 toughness for being a dumbass. Okay. Easy fight. And I like my character Mono. I have the fun him which uh, maybe does stuff. I am not quite sure yet. But you know what? We will continue to the Voidship Bridge next time. For now, this will be the end of the episode. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.